Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to continue with our discussion on, on uh, SML and this is the third part of uh, our SML uh, discussion and what uh, will be our main focus today is looking at some ex uh, um, advanced functionalities of the of the standard, M, standard ML uh, language which really shows that uh, uh, the language is um, uh, a full-fledged programming language as opposed to say a teaching language like like scheme so and one of the things that are important in, in languages that, that are used in, in uh, real applications is of course uh, exception handling and ML has indeed exception handling mechanism and one can define an exception like this, exception no match. Here the name of the exception is no match. And then we can raise the exception by using the keyword raise and then the exception name. So let's now uh, look at a function called member, which is uh, implemented in the following manner. Uh, member looks for an element A in a list X raises an exception if the list is empty but else returns the portion of the list from the first occurrence of a so it's not it, it does not return true or false uh, to indicate whether the the uh, element a was found in list x or not but it list but it returns the portion of the list from the first occurrence of a uh, so, how would we do this? Well, we can we can uh, uh, use the name no match here for our uh, exception. So we're basically declaring an exception here, exception no match, and then in our function, once again we're using using cases and patterns in this implementation. So the base case is when we have the element A and the empty list. So remember what we have here, it's actually a tuple. Uh, the argument to the member function is uh, supposed to be a two tuple or a pair where the first element of the pair is the element that we're looking for in the list and the second one is the list itself. So if we have an empty list we just re re raise an exception here and we actually raise the exception called no match. That's the one that we defined or declared here at the beginning. Now if the list that comes in is not empty then we can split it up uh, into um, head and tail. So that means we you can use this pattern B double colon Y meaning B is the head and Y is the tail. And if the element that we're looking for which is A is equal to the head of the list which is B if A is equal to B, then we just return uh, the second element, which is the list itself. So basically we, then, we are then returning the portion of the list starting from the first occurrence of the element found. If A is not equal to B, then we just call the member function recursively, again using the element that came in, and then the tail of the list. So Let's actually see this. Um, I have this program already implemented and recall how I load a program into the SML interpreter. I use uh, the use keyword. L okay, this font is fine, right. So I have to give the whole path and this is, I guess it's called the member. So I put the path in quotes and then a semicolon at the end. And um, let's actually look at uh, well we'll do that in a minute. So uh, now if I do something like member 3 in the list 1, 2, 3, 4, 
3 is definitely found in the list and now it returns the portion of the list starting for, from from the first occurrence of the of the element found so element 3 is found in the list so i get back 3 4 the list 3 4 so that's an integer list now what happens if i on the other hand search the element and it's not found 3 is not in the list i'm searching for the element 3 then i get an caught exception nomads because it was raised in our code we raised the exception so what happens basically here is that a never became equal to b so recursively we we uh, called the member function until at the very end the tail was empty in that case uh, the first pattern was true the base case and the exception nomads was raised but as is kind of obvious we didn't we didn't handle the exception there's nothing in this code that handles the exception we're only raising the exception so that would be the next step how do we handle exceptions so we can use the following syntax uh, if we compute an expression then we can use the keyword handle and the name of the exception and then after the arrow or equal sign arrow we have the code that handles the exception so if an exception name is raised when computing expression one then control is transferred to expression two so let me get this program member see here is the exception that we declared here is the fun function member that we just wrote or looked at and now I want to look at a code that actually handles the exception that is raised in member so I'm I've uh, written another function here called member2 which takes uh, an element to be searched uh, search for and the list x and uh, this member2 function actually calls the member function so this is the expression to be evaluated if the nomads exception is raised while evaluating this expression then we handle it by using this code here and what does this do this is something that we haven't really seen before this starts with a parenthesis open and closes here and it contains a sequence of of uh, statements really so the first one actually just writes out uh, a message saying uh, Tomer list here meaning empty list um, so I, let me actually just change that and then it has another expression here which will so the last expression which will actually be the one that will be returned so the member member two function will indeed return an empty list if the nomads exception is raised and we uh, handle it in this code here so this is really what I have here on the slide I've just shown you the code and uh, what happens now is if we instead of calling function member if I call the function member 2 which really just calls the function member and then handles the exception if it is raised now in this case the exception won't be raised because 3 is indeed part of the list in that case I just get back what we got earlier the list 3 4 but now if I try to handle the exception 
So now I'm looking for the element 3 in the list 1, 2, 2, 4, which means that the element is not found. That means that the member function will raise the exception. And then since we have code to handle it, we say that if the if the nomads exception is raised while evaluating this expression member, then we will handle it in the following code here. We will print out and so on. So it says here empty list or tomer listy. Let me actually see since I changed the code, I can reload the code and rerun. the uh, expression and now I get empty list. And notice here that the value of uh, this function called to member2 is the uh, empty list. It's the empty list because that was the last expression inside the, the parenthesis here. Okay, so this was uh, just a very short uh, example of uh, exceptions in, in ML. Now, uh, there is one type that we haven't talked about. Uh, we have earlier talked about the basic types in the language like int and car and bool, and then we have talked about ways of, of uh, building more complex types out of the basic types. Like we have talked about functional types, we have talked about product types, and we have talked about the list types. So there's one more type that we haven't talked about, which is called the unit. It's also a basic type in, in the language. It's really similar to void, or we can think of it like a void type in C or C++. Uh, but actually unit has one value. Unit has the value parenthesis open, parenthesis close. And uh, you might have noticed that when I um, loaded the program uh, member, I got uh, the interpreter told me what was the f what was the type of the member function. Here it was a it was a uh, pair, an element of some type a, and then a list that includes elements of type A, and it mapped those into a list of type A, similar to the member2 function. But then it says it is equal to parenthesis open, parenthesis close, and then unit. So at the end, it says that the, the overall uh, uh, type uh, of the, uh, the overall result of loading the um, program member.sml is the unit type. Now uh, unit as I said has one value parenthesis open parenthesis close. Closed. It, it, it is used as an argument in a function which takes no arguments. That's kind of weird to say this but it's used as an argument in a function which takes no arguments. So when we say uh, I'm defining a function called hello and the body of the function is simply r returning uh, the string hello world. So what does the interpreter tell me now? Hello is a function that takes unit as a parameter or basically maps the unit type into a string. So even though it looks like hello is not taking any uh, parameter, it is indeed taking a parameter of the type unit. Now, uh, sometimes it is the case that one needs to execute a sequence of statements that in some way have side effects. For example, print statements. We can say that the print statements have side effects because they're changing the changing the, 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 the output, the changing the, the way the output looks. Um, so, and we, we indeed saw this example here, that we really had a sequence of statements. First we printed out, uh, we printed out uh, a message, 
that says uh, empty list and then in the second statement we had a single expression that that consists of the uh, consists of the empty list so we had two statements here and the syntax in general for this is that we have parentheses open we have some expression then we have semicolon uh, after the expression uh, or, or between say between expressions so we have first expression semicolon then a second expression semicolon and so on until we have the last expression so this is really a list of statements and what's important here is that the value the value of this list of statements is the value of the last statement so that's why we had in the example for number two we had uh, the empty list as the last expression because the value of the whole statement list is the value of the last expression and we wanted to return the empty list if we once we had printed out the message so here is here is here is an example of a function that uh, prints a list so how it's how is it implemented um, the function print list is uh, implemented using cases and patterns again it takes a list if the list is empty then notice what we're doing we're returning the unit we're returning unit as a value it's kind of a void isn't it i mean if the if the list is empty then we don't have anything to print and then we just uh, return void uh, unit now if the list is not empty it means we the, the pattern x double colon xt can be matched against the list because then the list contains uh, at least one element and if that's the case what do we do we call the function to string in a structure called int we haven't really talked about this we will do that uh, in a while but this is this is a structure kind of a module called int and in that structure the function to string is defined which basically takes um, in this case an integer and converts it to a string so notice that the built-in function prints needs a string that's why we need to uh, convert this to a string so here this function really assumes that the, the list that we uh, that is the argument to the print list function is a list of integers because here we're assuming that x is an integer we're converting the, an integer to string then we print out a new line and then we call print list recursively for the tail so what are we doing really we are printing each element of an integer list uh, separately on, on a line one element in a line and then finally once the list comes empty becomes empty the base case will kick in and will won't do anything it will just return a unit as a value so if we if i load this program it's called print list It says that print list is a function that takes a list of integers as a, as an argument and returns unit. It makes sense, right? It takes a list of integers as a value. It really returns unit as a, a result, but it has the side effect that it's doing some printing before it returns the value before it returns unit um, so if I now call print list with a list one two three four I get one two three four it's on a separate line and then finally what is returned is unit because of the base case 